Seattle is giving birth to a brand new type of coffee. It's called a Tomo and it's coffee made without a coffee bean. So let's go check it out and see what it tastes like. This is what Atomo calls molecular coffee. It's made from all natural ingredients and the proprietary formula looks like a regular cup of cold brew. And yes, it still has caffeine. So here are a couple of those raw materials in a very early prototype and I can feel it, the texture is quite coarse, but it has a very similar properties to a normal ground coffee that you would put in any of your pour overs or your aeropresses. Taking a sniff, it's very earthy. This is not representative of what the final product will smell like, but it smells pretty good. So I'm very excited to have a taste and see how it all comes together. So what goes on in this lab? There's a lot oh, of amazing yeah. machines and some concoctions in front of us. Yeah, sure. So this is, a, this is our what we call our roasting lab, right? Mm -hmm. And while we're not roasting beans, we are roasting some plant-based materials that we end up using in our formulation. The vials in front of us are different components that make up what we call the big five in coffee, right? And that's the body, the color, the aroma, the flavor, and the bioactives. So, so the first vial that we have right in front of us, right, uh, this is what uh, we call our base. So if I smell this, it does smell like a mm -hmm. good start. Yep. Okay, so then yep. we put it on here. We put it on there. And then uh, we got a mixer in there and we're going to create a beautiful vortex that we're going to end up using to mix up. So this first element is uh, got some characteristic bitterness that you have with coffee. Now one thing you should note is our first cup of coffee, we're aiming at an ultra smooth cup of coffee. So not very acidic, not very bitter. The idea is we drink it without the cream or sugar. Which yeah, is, which, is which means you can, whether you are a coffee drinker or not a coffee drinker, this should be pleasant for you. I want you to pick up on some of the aroma that went in there too, because there were some aromatic compounds that were in there mm -hmm. too, and you can note it's starting to take Very, the shape of coffee a little yeah, more. Yeah, it it's actually smells a little bit more nutty now. Yeah. Like I got a little bit more of the, because before it was just like a roast. Yeah, and now it's exactly. starting to get a little sweeter yeah, actually, yeah, even yeah. though that was supposed to be the bitter. Oh, right? there was some other stuff in there the as other well. magic, yes. I see, okay. All right, next component. And you'll see it start to take life. You'll see some texture forming, you'll see some color forming, you'll smell those aromas. Take a smell. Yeah, try that. Oh, that really smells like coffee now. Mmm, that smells really nice. I can't smell any bitterness or any yeah. of that sourness either. It's, right. it's quite rich, actually. Okay, yeah. the last element. The last now that element. looks like coffee right there. Yeah, <laughs> it's got some of the, uh, remember I said some of the color components that oh. we uh, associate with coffee. And then we'll give it mm. some time for everything time. to mix okay. together and everything to mature together. And then we'll take and we'll go do a tasting. Sounds good. Okay, Andy, it's time yeah. for the taste test now. Yeah, welcome. We have lined up for you some of the most popular cold brews out there. And we want to see if you can pick out which cold brew is ours. Oh, okay, this is this is interesting because it's, mm -hmm. it's a blind test for me because I haven't seen which ones you poured. However, I did smell the brew mm -hmm. that we just So that concocted. might give you an advantage. Right, okay, uh, I'm gonna start from anywhere. It doesn't start really matter. Start from anywhere, All right. right I'll right, start right. from the end, yeah. makes sense. Yeah. Okay. You can cleanse your palate in between if you wish. It's, um, it's a very traditional cold brew, mm. a little bit bitter. Mm -hmm. Definitely mm -hmm. tastes the, just tastes like coffee. Yeah. This one is smoother, mm -hmm. definitely smoother. A little bit sweeter. This one is sweeter, I can tell instantly. Mm, that one is very like caramelly, mm -hmm. very smooth as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. cleanse again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this one's a little more sour than the previous mm -hmm. one, mm -hmm. a little bit more. Again, that's nice. It's not bitter though. Mm -hmm. I like that one. Okay, lucky last. Let's see. This one's smooth. It has, it's kind of like a combination of, of mm. all of these three. Oh, now I have to see which one I think is- Which one is ours? Which one I think is your coffee. Okay, I, I think I'm gonna narrow it down to two. Yeah. It could be. I think it's either this one mm -hmm. or this one. I think it's this one. 
Is it is it that one? You are correct. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, but okay, but here's the thing. I did smell it beforehand. Right. And it just it smelled a lot like mm -hmm. what I had smelled. But this one's pretty good. Yeah. But this one is definitely like I wouldn't be fooled completely because right. it's it's coffee. It's yeah. just not with a bean. Yeah. This is our almond mocha. Okay, so this is almond milk in it, and this is essentially the same brew it's, underneath, or is it different? It's a very similar base okay. uh, to it, but it also has uh, cocoa in it that's not from the cocoa. Okay. Mmm, that's smooth. It's nutty. Well, that could be your that's afternoon. Good. That could be that's your afternoon. afternoon. That's right. my afternoon drink. That's your little dessert. Okay, so I've yeah. got my beanless from morning to evening. Absolutely, right, every step of the way. Uh, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna have to take a couple of these home because they're, right. they're yeah, quite good. Sure. <laughs> so why do we need a coffee that's not made from a bean? Like, it, it right. seems like a problem that doesn't necessarily need a solution. It, many people don't understand the problem that coffee is facing around the world. And the problem is, is that climate change and global warming is really affecting the coffee growing regions. So coffee can be grown in a very narrow band and that band is really sensitive to the temperature because the beans actually, if it's too hot, the beans mature too quickly. And when a coffee bean matures too quickly, it doesn't have all the aroma and flavor. So what we hope will happen is that farmers will continue making great coffee, but as the demand for coffee increases and as they can no longer support the growth, that they can transition to our coffee. So what if I'm a coffee lover who loves a variety of different blends from different sure. regions? Like, yeah. how are yeah. you going to try and emulate, say, a Kenyan or an Ethiopian right. coffee? Yeah, each one of those coffees has a unique signature to it, whether it's more acidic or more bitter or kind of roasty toasty. You can actually mimic those qualities, exactly. So down to the molecular compounds and say, let's create a Kenyan today or let's create an Ethiopian. So what about espresso grinds? Is that something you're working on too? Yeah, so we know that baristas love to have the whole beans, and so for those baristas, we want to supply that whole bean for them. Hang on, so you're re-engineering coffee without a bean, but then you're turning it potentially into a bean at the end? That's right, that's how crazy we are. Yes. Mind blowing, <laughs> that's, that's crazy. It turns out that coffee made without the bean actually tastes pretty close to the real deal. Thanks so much for watching. If you liked the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you want to try this very fine coffee for yourself, it's going to be available in 2020 in cold brew form.